Hi, my name is Jeff H. Seip from practiceinterviews.com and in today's video we're going to cover a common Google interview question, especially if you're going into a client facing role. I want you to imagine that you're tasked with improving customer satisfaction from 80 to 90 percent without any additional tools or resources. How would you go about doing this? And so in this video, I simply want to focus in on two different types of areas. So one's going to be for Google Ads and then one's going to be for Google Cloud. Now remember the best way to have success with open-ended questions is by using the CFAST method. Super high level, this is the CFAST method. Um, I haven't shared this particular slide in any video, but I think it's really just kind of helpful to give you an overview of how to answer these open-ended questions. So. I want you to definitely come back to the video, pause, um, and look at this. But I just wanted to give a quick flash. We have this for free on our free desktop app at practiceinterviews.com. But you are going to start with clarifying questions. You're really going to focus strongly on these transitions. And from clarifying questions, we're going to introduce the framework. And then from the framework, we're going to do assumptions and then get into the weeds of the solution. One of the biggest common mistakes in the order here is bringing assumptions before the framework, but it doesn't tie as well into the solution if we don't table them. So you wanna table them. Again, I think it's just a great moment to really just pause on this slide, make sure that it makes sense. We spent a lot of time building this and working this out, but I wanna get right into the weeds and give you the answers to these questions. So now that we're a little bit more familiar with CFAST, Let's go ahead and dive in and please stay tuned to the end where I'll do a recap of why I took my approach on each specific section. So to start off, we're going to focus in on the account strategist role and our interviewer is going to be Sue. It's always Sue. So we'll always prompt with the question and then we'll dive right through it. So Sue's going to ask me, hey, imagine you're tasked with improving customer satisfaction from 80 to 90 percent without any additional resources or tools. How would you go about doing this? Sue, you know, my first question is, is this a newer or existing customer? And so what I want to understand is, have they been a customer for maybe a quarter, six months, or let's say maybe a year plus? Sue, I'd also want to understand my personal relationship with this customer. Like, have I ever worked with this customer before? Or is this the first time? I'd definitely be curious about their client industry? Is this like an industry that we're very familiar with or is this a niche down industry? Um, a big question would be, are we trying to improve customer satisfaction with us for the client or are we trying to improve our customer's client satisfaction for their clients? I definitely want to know if we're dealing with a physical product or a service. I'd want to know if we've run any surveys in the past. And then lastly, are we targeting maybe the entire customer base or just a section of the user base? Sue, I know that's a lot of questions. Can you clarify any of those questions for me? Okay, what I'd love to do is let's just chat about a few concepts that I think are gonna be helpful for us to narrow down our focus. So absolutely the number one place I'm always gonna start is gonna be data. I just need to data gather, data collect. I need to get that information. Then I'm going to be thinking about, okay, well, in correlation with that, we really know that we don't have any additional resources or tools. So what is their budget constraint or constraints? What's their timeline? What are their overall resources? And then just understanding the broader landscape of the total scope and scale as it comes to anything, including customer segment who are the stakeholders I'm gonna be interacting with, and then obviously creating that shared vision and shared plan. So I'd love to start with the data. I think it's an appropriate next step, but Sue, what do you think? Would you like to chat about the data or anything else? Okay, I wanna start with just a few assumptions, Sue. I'm going to assume that this is an SMB client that we've been supporting for about a year in the e-commerce space, and they're using our full suite of Google Ads. The last thing I want to assume is this is customer satisfaction for their clients. So they're really looking to improve customer satisfaction with their client base. So if we're going to look at the data, this really comes back to the first very logical step, which is tell us what's happening. Tell us what's going wrong. Like before we meet with any of these stakeholders or SMEs, 
can they just provide a little bit of data and information? Now correlated with that, we're absolutely gonna to wanna to look at the last survey results that they ran with their customers. And we're gonna dig into everything from just anything that was yes or no questions or multiple choice and absolutely any free range comments, anything like that's gonna be really critical. Then as we look at those items, we're gonna look for themes, we're gonna look for trends, specifically correlated to things like performance, uh, utilization, scalability, ease of use, et cetera. Then we're gonna come internal and we're gonna be looking at our internal data from a competitive landscape. So have we been working with like SMB e-commerce companies for about a similar amount of time? And my best guess is that we probably have. We probably have some really good use cases. We could even dig into the POCs that we've done for those competitors and kind of scrape out any pertinent data that's gonna be really helpful for us. And then the last step is obviously looking at the product types. So whether it's display or search or YouTube, we wanna really get a pulse on how they're using our suite of services and look at that data before we meet with them. Now, Sue, that's a great pausing point. Um, I would love to dig more into the performance component. That's one of my favorite items to chat about. Or we could kind of take a step back and look a little bit more at how they're scaling across these platforms. Is there an area that you prefer? Okay, so we've gone through that piece. Now I wanna flip over to the cloud. So we're gonna focus on a really high level generic sales engineer role for cloud. That could be Informa, data analytics, ML. Again, our interviewer is Sue, it's always Sue. And just for the prompt, we're gonna restate the question and go through it. So imagine that you're tasked with improving customer satisfaction from 80 to 90% without any additional resources or tools. How would you go about doing this? All right, Sue, definitely wanna understand the landscape of the client. So are they a newer client, an existing client? Like has it been a quarter, six months, or a year plus that we've been working with them? Have I ever worked with them? Do I have an established relationship with them? I absolutely would wanna know where are they at in their cloud journey? Are they pretty new? They have some knowledge or they're a very sophisticated cloud player. I'd want to know if they're looking to increase satisfaction with a product, a service, or both. And then I just want to know, because we're looking at their satisfaction overall, have we actually run surveys with them in the past? Again, Sue, I, I know that this is a lot of questions, but I just wanted to see if you could give me any direction, any feedback. Okay, Sue. I'm kind of thinking through this and I want to take a few different approaches as I think about working with this cloud customer. Um, I definitely have to take that step back approach to start. That means I'm going to be listening, questioning, and just coming from a place of strong empathy and trying to really build that trust. Then I want to think a little bit more on the technical side of things like how are they utilizing the platform? How are they working on things like scale, automation? And then the last piece is obviously if we could bring those two pieces together and really focus in on that action plan and really create and build some strong training and development. Automation would be a great place to start to improve customer satisfaction with this cloud client. But let me just take a step back. Is there any area you'd like to focus in on? Okay, Sue, so let's make some assumptions. Uh, let's say enterprise client, um, we've been supporting them for about a year. Let's say they're in the technology space and, and we're their cloud provider. They're really only using GCP services. And so if we're gonna focus in on automation, maybe let's take a look at a tool that they could be using like Kubernetes, right? Pretty big one. And maybe we could dive a little bit deeper and look at their configurations specifically if they've been with cloud for a year as they're rolling out new services and new projects. And so one of the best ways we can improve customer service is maybe looking at data and helping them create some strong dashboards. A couple of areas that any company would be interested in, especially a technology company would be, first of all, traffic, just looking at overall user activity. And then secondarily, we'd wanna look at latency, just overall server response time then we could create the dashboards and automate them. Specifically, we could copy these dashboards 
between workspaces. And not only will this provide more clarity into the data, but we're really automating things for them at the same time. This is super high level. I think we could definitely go deeper, Sue, into the traffic and latency items and, and maybe what those dashboards look like from an automation standpoint. We didn't talk about things like errors or saturation, or we could go back to the beginning and talk a little bit more about scaling. Uh, is there an area that you prefer? Okay, let's transition, let's flip over, let's go really high level. I just wanna sum up my approach to each section of the CFAST method. So with clarifying questions, you can see there were some differences, but overall the clarifying questions were relatively similar. What does this mean? Create go-to clarifying questions, questions that are gonna cast a really wide net and work all the time. Secondly, on the framework side, I'm gonna throw a couple cards up here. So the first one, was more operational, that's my program management framework, but I scraped out a couple of details, but overall, I went programmatic, I went operational on the first framework, and then on the second framework, I used a hybrid approach. So my hybrid approach was a collaborative framework combined with a technical, more GCP framework. And I'll throw both those cards up there as well, just so you'll have links to those videos, but. I really just want you to have two or three go-to frameworks that you really like, and then you can take this hybrid approach and that can be incredibly successful. On the assumption side, my assumptions were pretty straightforward. I wanted to default to an existing customer. I specifically defaulted to one year just so I knew I would have some data. I picked non-regulated industries just to make it a little bit easier on myself. And in one case, I picked actually improving the customer satisfaction for my clients' clients, and then in the other one, improving customer satisfaction directly for us with the client. And I think either approach would work fine. Um, you're really gonna try and suss that out in your clarifying questions. Lastly, for the solutions. You can see for the account strategist role, I actually kept it a little bit higher level, but I triggered that prompt to see if we could kind of go more into the Google ad space at the end. Now for the SE role, I went more technical, but I actually kept it a little bit briefer because I'm trying to, trying to get just like that baseline from Sue of whether she wants to go tech or more collaborative. Now remember the question is no additional resources or tools, but I was assuming that they were utilizing Kubernetes and maybe just didn't understand all the functionality, especially from an automation perspective. But overall, I'm just trying to scrape the surface on technical to see if that's the way that Sue wants to lean or if she wants to lean again, more a little bit more collaborative. So I just wanna throw the other concepts in here and I feel like I don't do this enough in my videos. There's a ton of items when I script these out that come up um, that I just didn't or wasn't able to touch on today. So I'm just gonna throw this up here and, and talk through just a few other items that we could have been talking about, which is CSAT surveys, influencing factors, verbiage, desired outcomes, drivers, quant slash qual, expectations, proactive versus reactive, interaction level, responsiveness, communication, creating strong internal champions, cohorts, replication, features, etc. Hey, as always, I know I throw a lot out there in these videos, but I really hope this one helps. I really enjoyed creating this video. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Thanks.